Greetings, cyberdogs and citizens of the Interbubs. This is Ren Diggity Now coming at you from just outside the giant elephant in this Let's Play Minecraft survival series. In the previous episode, we returned from an absolutely epic adventure. And in this episode, my friends, we're going to do a little bit of work on the mob trap behind me before heading over to the farmlands to do a little bit of redstone. That's right, guys, we're going to do some redstone. Don't get nervous, though, my friends. I think everything's going to be good, man. I got the schematics in my brain and it's going to be sweet. Sit back and relax, my friends. Let's play some Minecraft survival. Cyber diggity dogs, I've got a confession to make that I'm not proud of. The more time that I have spent here at the elephant mob trap, the more I have realized how much I have absolutely decimated this environment. I mean, look at this. This used to be a lush, beautiful jungle. And it's now been replaced by concrete, wood, andesite. The beach has been utterly, utterly ruined. I've sucked up all of the sand to make glass over the last three episodes of survival. I mean, look at this place. It's looking terrible. Although in the distance there, that looks kind of cool, right? There's like a little floating island. Man, that is awesome. Hmm. Um, let's, let's, let's put that one in, uh, in the back of our minds, guys. That looks like a really cool place to build something, right? Yeah, distracted by awesomeness. But seriously, guys, I need to repair this. I need to fix this beach. We need to head over to Dogtown and get a redonkulous amount of sand and literally repair this beach as much as we can. Because look at this. It goes all the way around the corner. Look how much damage I've done to this environment. That sheep is so angry with me, he's turned his back to me. He's like, shame on you, Red Dog. This used to be my beach. I used to come and sunbathe here. And look at the view from this beach too. I mean, this is a glorious mountain thing going on over there. We need to fix this beach, guys. All right, you know what? We're going to have to add that as a quest to the, uh, the Dogolith quest pillars. I'm going to fix this beach as much as I can. I don't know what we're going to do with this thing, though. We're going to have to... <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you know what? One of you cyber dogs once suggested making a lighthouse. Maybe this is a perfect location for a lighthouse. And then that'll look, that won't look so terrible, um, you know. But man, we're going to have a lot of repair work to do. But check it out, my friends. We have been working hard. And when I say we, I really mean me. I've been working my butt off over here at the mob trap. And I've just been trying out some different designs. I'm trying to figure out exactly how to make this place look really sweet. At the end of the day, it's two giant pillars, right? So we have to work really hard to make it work. Now, I have been testing out different configurations of the mob trap to try and get it as, uh, you know, as efficient as possible. Looks like it's only delivered one zombie at the moment. That's not good. Um, and I've also been watching it. Uh, for quite some time and some of the zombies are actually dying when they land and it's kind of strange because they're dropping from 20 blocks which is definitely not high enough to kill them so at some point in the network I think they're drowning a little bit and taking some damage uh, so we're gonna have to check that in today's episode but check it out guys in the previous rendition there was only one entry hole into the kill zone which was over here and what was happening is the zombies were getting trapped at the back wall so what I did was I added, I added in some more murder holes all the way around. So now it's a 360 degree murder hole of awesomeness. So if the zombie walks away from me or I can't hit him, I just go around the corner like this and I'm going to take him down. So that's pretty sweet, right? I quite like this design. Now, because I did that, it gave me this cool little sort of symmetrical uh, pyramid thing going on. And I've been experimenting with using this polished uh, andesite, which I, th I think looks really sweet. I kind of want this build to be polished andesite and stone. I think those look quite nice together. We need to figure out a nice way to do that, actually, to get those two working together really nicely. But uh, this is looking pretty good, right? What do you guys think? Kind of cool, right? Now, we have a whole bunch of space to work with over here. No idea what I'm going to do in this castle, but I've got some pretty decent uh, plans and suggestions. In fact, uh, my brother gave me some amazing advice, and my, this, is not my, this is not real Goxy, my brother. This is my other brother from the same freaking mama, DJ Schmitty, man. Oh, man, he's awesome, man. You know what? DJ Schmitty's actually training, playing Minecraft right now, because we're going to record some videos together. But he gave me some really cool ideas for the mob castle. He suggested adding in a gladiator pit somewhere that we could wash the zombies from the trap into the pit when we want to just go cray-cray. You know, we want to get our, 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 our hacking and slashing on. So you can imagine if we drained all of the zombies into a pit, and then we could dive in with all of our gear and hack the jazz out of them, man. That would be pretty sweet. He also suggested adding, adding an armory to this build. We still need an armory in, uh, in, our, in our world somewhere, right? We haven't actually built an armory yet. So this seems like an absolutely amazing location for an armory. 
So DJ Schmitty, my brother from the same freaking mama, awesome idea, Steve. And uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of those. Now guys, what we need to do is actually test out the, the, the transport system and check it out. I've added ice to the bottom of all of these canals now. This has all been iced up too, so this is looking sweet. Move along! Move along, you bastards! Uh, this actually is not um, <laughs> not conducive to good testing. But I just wanted to show you guys all the icing that I've done here. Check it out, looking good, right? Oh yeah. You can see how quickly things move. Look how fast those items move over the uh, over the ice. And this little bastard is not actually going up the, the elevators. But let's move up here to see if there's any spots that they are drowning. My suspicions are that they might be drowning at the very top of this cub fan um, <laughs> water vader. See, my thinking was they might be drowning right here right here in this spot because they might be getting to this position and then sort of just hanging here and taking some drown damage before moving on and it's not every zombie that dies when he lands it's sort of like one in one in uh, three or i suppose one in four zombies do that so it's kind of strange man i want to you know what i actually just want to do a little bit of testing i'm going to head back to the Oh my goodness, no, this is not a good place to, to get out. I'm going to head back here, spawn a few more of these zombies, and we will have a look through that hole to see if they are taking any drown damage. All right, guys, sounds like some zombies are coming up the water vader. You can see, look at him, he's getting stuck there, right? That's not good. He's definitely drowning if he's getting stuck there. That scalar butt has, yep, he's gone very nicely through. Perfect. But that one zombie is, he's stuck down there, isn't he? I think he's trying to track me, which is why he's getting stuck. And yep, there he's taking damage. Okay, so that's interesting. Why is he getting stuck in this position? That's very interesting. Let's see. Have we missed out a sign here? Is there a sign missing? Hmm. Yes. There is a sign missing here. Is it? Yes, there is a sign missing here, isn't there? Oh my goodness gracious. There's a freaking sign missing here. Okay. Well, at least we've isolated the problem. Seriously, man, this is such a technical build. This is like the most technical build that I've ever freaking made, man. This Vator uh, is a cub fan design, which is absolutely awesome. It works brilliantly. But if you just have one block out of place, it messes up the entire thing, man. It's absolutely crazy. So let's add this sign over here. And that should fix it. That should fix it completely. That's going to stop the zombies getting stuck, I think. So let's do a little bit more testing. Let's go get a few more zombies spawned. I hear the moaning of a delivery. There we go. Look at that. Perfect. Absolutely perfect, man. He came straight up, straight out. Oh, that is just working like a boss now. Brilliant. Nicely done, Ren Diggity Dog. Man, I'm proud of myself. And guys, i got to say, man, you know, this is one of the most technical builds that I've ever done. And uh, it is working a treat. Absolutely awesome. Um, let's just do a little bit more monitoring now to make sure that these zombies aren't dying. It's slowly but surely filling up, which is great. So let's spend a bit of time around here, actually. Uh, and we'll let the zombie spawner do its business and we can check if this thing fills up, man. If this butthole gets congested, which is the ultimate plan. And uh, yeah, while we do that, guys, we could do a little bit more work around here. And what I've been trying to figure out is how to actually build up the walls of this castle. Is this going to be a square castle or is this going to be a, a multi-layered castle? My thinking is that I want to make a nice square castle with four spires at the corners. I think that'll look kind of cool. I want to go for like a super gothic type feel. And I kind of, I don't really know how to do it though. So I'm just going to do a little bit of experimenting over here. In the meantime, I want to talk about some exciting news that I want to share with you guys, man. Uh, I mean, it's not the most exciting news in the world. It's not like I've won the lottery or something like that. But for me, in my universe, in my world, it's absolutely amazingly exciting. Um, and it's so exciting, in fact, that I want to share it with you today. And let's see, what I want to try and work out, actually, is maybe we do like an, oct an octagon type of tower, something like that. Maybe one, maybe two, hmm, two by two by two, maybe something like this. Now, for the last, I don't even know how many episodes, I would say for the last uh, 30 episodes, the last 30 videos that I put on YouTube, I have been kind of annoyed with myself. I have been annoyed with the horrible freaking noise coming out of my keyboard, man. About four months ago, I bought myself a brand new mechanical keyboard. And I even pimped it out by adding these little rubber things underneath each of the keys to try and make it silent. And as hard as I tried, my friends, I just could not make that thing silent. 
eventually what I ended up doing was building a box out of an old uh, Amazon delivery box uh, and cutting out holes in that box that my hand could go into and covering my entire keyboard with the box uh, and covering my entire hand with the box too actually for that matter uh, and then piling comic books on top of the box to try and dampen the sound coming out of my keyboard i mean ridiculous i'm a freaking professional youtuber man i shouldn't be covering my my keyboard with cardboard boxes oh the shame right <laughs> Oh man, a couple days I was having a chat with my good buddy Iskal about this exact problem. And this is just terrible, isn't it? I mean, what is ha what has happened here? Wow. <laughs> Absolute, absolutely awful. Man, absolutely awful. Uh, and Iskal, in, in fact, told me a, a whole bunch of really good tips about how to get that keyboard sound dampened. Now this could help some of you guys out there too who are making YouTube videos and, and uh, trying to make YouTube channels and so on because you might be experiencing the same problem. Now what I did uh, this year also is I bought uh, a swivel stand for my, my Yeti microphone and essentially what that is it's a, a stand that can extend and it can move around and so on. And this stand you can clamp onto your desk right with a clamp and or you can clamp it onto anything really and then you can swivel it around uh, as you wish. Now I clamped my, uh, my stand, my swivel stand directly to my desk. And what Iskal told me is that what's happening there is every time you press a key on your keyboard, that vibration is going through uh, the desk into the microphone. And that's why you're getting that clickety clackety sound. On top of that, you're using a mechanical keyboard, which is a very loud keyboard, even though it's supposed to be a soft keyboard, it's actually not very good for recording because uh, it picks up, you know, it, it's, it's very clickety clackety, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Um, so, this week I ordered myself a brand new Razer Death Adder, which is an absolutely awesome keyboard. It's as simple and as plain as it can get. No mess, no fuss. It's just got the keys that you need. No macro, none of that nonsense. It, and it's not very expensive either. Hey man, it sounds like I'm sponsored by Razer. I wish, but I really am not. <laughs> but it's absolutely awesome. It's a chiclet key keyboard. And a chiclet key keyboard means that the keys are very, very short. Which means that a key press uh, is very, very short. And you guys might be able to hear a tiny little bit of clickety clacketing. But it's certainly a giant improvement on what was happening before. So I am so happy about that. Because now I can actually play Minecraft and all the other games on my channel without having to cover the keyboard with a box. You see, covering the keyboard with a box means that I can't actually see the keys. So <laughs> when I'm trying to type stuff, for example, it's actually not possible because I can't see the freaking keys. But now I feel like a f I'm free, man. I, it's like a freedom that I haven't felt in, in ages. And I'm so freaking stoked, man. There we go. Well, I think that seems pretty decent, right? Certainly better than my first attempt, which was absolutely horrendous. Sorry about that, guys. Wow. I mean, you know, I know that I'm, I'm, I'm not the, the best Minecraft player in the world, but that was just embarrassing. Um, <laughs> this is looking much better, though. I kind of like that. And what we could potentially do is make like a nice little spiral staircase. And perhaps we could have, uh, you know, the spiral staircase could go all the way up to the top. And we could have levels, different levels going up the castle. That could look pretty nice, right? Yeah, that could look pretty sweet. I think what I'm going to do is experiment with adding uh, three more of these spires to each of the corners of the castle. And then we'll have a look at where we're working with. Um, but let's, uh, let's have a look in here, man. How are things looking? Not great. If we're honest with each other. <laughs> things are definitely not filling up in here as fast as I would like. Interesting. Okay. Well, we're going to have to do a little bit more troubleshooting, I think. Um, I suppose what we do need to test is sitting in the AFK railway line and just going round and round and see how much we can spawn in a short space of time. What has happened in Paloma? But you know what, guys? I've actually spent the last uh, whew, four hours of playing Minecraft here on this build, so I'm ready to move on for now. Don't worry, guys. We will be back very soon. But I was inspired, as uh, usually I am, by one of my favorite Minecraft is etho <laughs> and uh whenever i do a redstone build it's it's usually a copy of an etho build because if i'm honest with you i'm i'm not good enough at redstone to come up with my own ideas so whenever i see an etho redstone build that i really really like um i usually try and do it or try and adapt it to my world and that's exactly what i want to try and do today guys so we're going to head over to the farmlands and uh this is going to make a lot of you cyber dogs happy because this is something that many of you have been asking me for years now we're going to try and automate our farms Oh yeah, baby. 
Sabba diggity dogs, I am tired. Tired, tired, tired of picking crops with my bare hands. My skin burning in the sun. My back aching from all the carrying. I am sick of it. And it is time, my friends, to take this place into the industrial age. We are going to figure out a way, my friends, to automate our farmlands. You know, the farmlands is one of the very first things that we built in our Minecraft world. So it's going to be kind of sad to change them. But you know what? One of you cyberdogs said in a comment uh, a few episodes ago that you really like the mob farm because what we are doing is literally starting to head into the late game of Minecraft. And you know what, guys? This is season four of survival. It's time to start heading into the late game. And we're going to start that process by automating our farmlands. All right, my friends, it is time to get technical with your asses. I'm going to try to explain to you and Paloma over there, who's looking very interested, how this automatic farm system is going to work. Now, let's go over what the intention of the farm is. Number one, I want to be able to farm automatically. And what I want to basically do is sit in a minecart, press a button, travel through my farm, break all of the crops in my farm and collect all of those crops uh, in the farm automatically and end up at the same position without having to have lifted a finger. So by the time I get back here, I wanted to have broken every crop in the system and collected every crop in the system. So that is the goal for the farm, right? How is this going to work? Well, it's actually a very simple uh, method and a very simple mechanic. And that's always the way with redstone, right? It, 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 it sounds complicated in the beginning, but as soon as you actually start working with it, it starts to become a lot clearer. And the way this is going to work, guys, is that we're going to use a detector rail at some point at the beginning of this system to trigger these sticky pistons inside of this pit. And what these sticky pistons are going to do is they are going to extend and they are going to break the crops that will be growing on top of them, right? So let's just get the dirt placed on top of them. And just for an example, we're going to use um, these, these delicious looking pumpkins, right? So you can imagine that these pumpkins are, are wheat or potatoes. Now, as we hit the detector rail, we want to trigger those sticky pistons and it's going to push these crops up to, to the same level as the rail. It's going to break those crops and as we go past the crops, we're going to collect them as they've broken. So that is the automatic breaking and collection uh, of the crops complete. And of course, what we're going to need to do is add a water source over here. So let's just get an infinite water source uh, brewing, like a so, and let's get some water in here. Oh yeah, that is looking beautiful. The water sources are in and we are making some good headway here, guys. Of course, these dirt blocks are now on top of those pistons. The next task for us, of course, is to get those pistons firing, right? And the way that we're going to do that is by using a signal coming from a, di a, a detector rail directly into the block that is next to uh, the pistons. So here are the pistons over here, right? So what, we, what we're going to need to do is send a redstone signal into this block over here, and that is gonna trigger the pistons. And the way that we're gonna do that, guys, is, is by running a bit of redstone uh, cabling all the way along the top of this line over here. So check it out, right? Where do the pistons go to? Oh, okay, so they go to over into this position over here. Oops, that ain't right. That is cute, but it is wrong. Get that out of there. All right, so what we're going to do is lay some redstone. There we go. Get the redstone on top of there. Now, the, all of these pistons are going to be activated when this redstone cable receives a signal. And that's going to push all of those dirt blocks up, break all of those crops, and allow us to automatically collect them as we travel upwards. Oh my goodness gracious, man. We are just getting waylaid by terrain. Paloma, you also need to get out of here, man. You are getting my way. Your cute little butt is messing with my tasks. I know you're doing your job keeping the creepers away, but please, just sit your cute little butt down over there. There we go. All right, so here we go, guys. We've got the uh, the redstone cable running on top of the blocks that are next to the pistons. Yep, there are the pistons over there. Sweet. Now what we need to do, of course, is get a signal into this redstone cable. And that's going to be very, very simple, right? Because all we're going to need to do is put a solid block above that redstone cabling like so. And what we need to do is get a detector rail in there, right? That detector rail is going to send a signal into... Let's, let's try it in this position. Ploma, get out of the way, your butthole. <laughs> Actually, you're gonna, probably going to drown if you go down there. I'm just going to put you all the way over here. All right, kitty cat. Come on, Paloma. Paloma. Oh, my goodness. Kitty cat, stay there. You hear me? <laughs> oh man, she is so cute. I can't be angry with her for more than just a few seconds. Uh, but here we go, guys, man. 
Can't believe my redstone build is being freaking distracted by a cat. I mean, honestly. Cats don't, cats are so selfish, right, in this world. They don't give a jazz what you are up to. Uh, but anyway, guys, let's try this now, right? So we've got this detector rail hanging over that redstone cable. So when a minecart hits that detector rail, the theory is that this redstone cable is going to get triggered, right? So let's just get a bit of redstone down there. I just broke that by mistake. There we go. And that is going to trigger the pistons that are underneath these blocks over here. All right. So there's only one thing to do, really, and that is to test this out, guys. Let's get a button set up on this wall like so with a little bit of powered rail there and let's get our minecart in huh and when we hit that button that powered rail is going to shoot us into this detector rail which should be triggering these pistons so that's the theory let's do this thing Bam! beautiful okay so the pistons triggered but the rail cart failed and i think the rail cart failed because it hit a normal line over here so i think what we're probably going to have to do Oh, of course it failed because these lines are actually not powered, right? We're going to have to actually power these rails up, I think. So let's just get um, a couple more blocks of cobblestone on the sides of these rails like so. And do I have a redstone torch in here? I don't have a redstone torch. How can you... St oh, honestly, Rendog, how can you start a redstone build without even a single redstone torch in your inventory? I mean... Wow. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now that the, the rail is powered, excellent. All of the pumpkins broke, which is great. Let's just collect them again for testing purposes. Let's get them down again. There we go. All right, let's try that one more time, shall we? Now that these lines are powered, let's get our rail card in there. Sit in that sucker, hit the button. Boom! Lovely. But... It looks like we might have to do a little bit of work on um, delaying the signal into the pistons because it looks like the, sh the uh, pumpkins are breaking really quickly. You can see we didn't actually collect all of them there. That one sort of busted to the side. I'm thinking what we might need to do is actually add a wall uh, above this water source like this. And that'll stop the crops actually going into the water source. The water source will stay there, of course. But let's, uh, let's just wall this up like this and hopefully the crops will bounce off the walls. That could work. And then I think we'll probably have to use some redstone repeaters or something to try and extend the signal. So I want to make the sing signal last a little bit longer once I hit this detector rail. So that by the time I'm sort of here in this position, that's when the pistons trigger. And that's when the crops break. And that's when I collect them. Oh baby, that could work really nicely. 